Good morning and thank you for being with us. We'll be talking about some of those reasons behind the hikes in our car and home insurance bills. That's coming up in our next segment. But we want to begin the program talking about the presidential campaign, Tuesday's debate and the messaging com coming from the candidates through their advertising. Dr. Erica Franklin Fowler joins me in studio. She's co-director of the Wesleyan Media Project. Welcome. Thanks so much for having me. Tell me what the Wesleyan Media Project is. What do you guys do? Yeah, so since 2010, we have been tracking political advertising in real time on television. We've expanded our scope to also include uh, Meta and Google. We do it all in real time and we put out real time uh, information to the public. Our goal and is transparency. Transparency. And you're nonpartisan. You're just looking at this stuff and telling people here's what's happening out exactly. there. Exactly. So I know you just have, if people want to check out your website, you just have a new report that posted talking about the candidates and economics. We what do. did you find? Yeah, so the campaigns over the summer were talking a lot about immigration for obvious reasons, but they've taken a turn. It's it's September, the heat of the general election is heating up. Both campaigns have turned to talk about bread and butter issues of economics. So what does this mean to a researcher as you watch that stuff? Are there things that you're looking for? What are you evaluating? What metrics do you look at? How do you determine what these ads mean to the campaigns and to the viewers? Yeah, so big picture, um, political advertising matters at the margin. That doesn't mean that the margin doesn't matter. Um, the, the campaigns are fighting for every little percentage that they have. At the Media Project, we track a whole host of different things. So we look at the volume of advertising since the balance is important between candidates. We also look at the issues that are being discussed, the tone, so we can say, you know, talk to you about both this campaign, but also historical trends going back actually to 2000. So we can talk about how this campaign differs from prior years. We're talking about millions and millions and millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. And you talk about it being at the margins. And obviously mm -hmm. we've seen uh, historically close election after close election after close right. election, um, especially when you factor the Electoral College into it. So those margins matter. How much do they matter to the campaigns? Well, they're everything to the campaign, right? Because the margin of victory, like to take you over that margin of victory is the difference between being in the White House or not. And so that's the reason why you see an increasing amount of spending on in American politics. Every campaign is seeking to win. They're not looking to be, I mean, they'd like to be efficient, but that's not their main goal. Their main goal is winning. So if someone is sitting at home this morning and they're thinking uh, they're either a Harris supporter or a Trump supporter or somewhere in between, but if, if they're in one of those two camps, the ads aren't for them, are they? No, they really aren't. I mean, and the campaigns, campaign outcomes are driven usually by the state of the economy, the distribution of partisanship, and whether there are other like ex big external events like COVID or like a war that's going on. Those are the those are the main things that will affect presidential outcomes. But then there are a small number of people in the middle who are still undecided. The campaigns are trying to speak to those people, and they're trying to both mobilize their own partisans, especially in the swing states where where every vote is going to matter very much and then they're also trying to persuade the undecided. All right I want to show two ads we have one from each campaign right. we should probably start with the Trump ad right because that sure. was the longest one out yeah. uh, so I'm going to play that for our viewers and you're going to tell me what's notable about that take a look at this That's ad um, from President Trump. I'm Donald J. Trump and I approve this message. Everyday prices are too high food rent gas back to school clothes that is called Bidenomics. A loaf of bread cost 50% more today. Ground beef is up almost 50%. There's not much left at the end of the month. Bidenomics is working. The price of housing has gone up. It feels so hard to just be able to get ahead. And we are very proud of Bidenomics. So obviously an effort there to tie what they believe was wrong with President Biden to Vice President Harris. Is that is that what do you see in an ad like that? What's notable to you? Yeah, exactly. I mean, so most Americans know Kamala Harris's name. They know that she's the vice president, but they don't know a lot about her. Um, and so one of the things that she's been talking about is the, you know, her plan for middle class America. This ad is intended by Trump to, to tie her to the current administration. There's a lot of frustration about cost of living and and um, cost of groceries and other sorts of things. And so that that campaign ad is definitely an attempt to tie Harris back to the Biden administration and the current un unhappiness in the country with our economic state. Looking at it as a media guy, uh, you know, you hear I'm Donald Trump and I approve this message at the top and the rest is right. just Kamala Harris's voice. Right. Is that do you look at and is there anything notable about the strategy there of how they put that together? For sure. I mean, campaigns like to use sound bites from the other candidate. It's the most effective way of, you know, like pitting their own words against them and look quite literally in that ad, that's exactly what's happening. Kamala Harris is talking to you and then they're 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 also using her words to 
counter the message. So it's definitely a, a good rhetorical strategy and one that can be effective. All right, let's take a look at an ad from Vice President Harris. It's even more recent because it comes after this past week's debate. And again, we're going to see uh, the candidates using each other's words. Let's take a look at that ad. Mm -hmm. There are two very different visions for our country. One that is focused on the future, and the other that is focused on the past. We're a failing nation, a nation that is dying. We're a nation that's in serious decline. What I do offer is a new generation of leadership for our country, one who brings a sense of optimism about what we can do. We all have so much more in common than what separates us, and we can chart a new way forward. I'm Kamala Harris, and I approve this message. So that being uh, one of the more recent ads that's running, what was, what was notable about that to you? Yeah, so I think this is picking up on, you know, Harris's strong performance in the debate. They're trying to contrast the two visions of the country and also Donald Trump's tendency to talk in, you know, uh, extreme language. So, and also to paint that, that different vision. So Harris is attempting to show her as the new way forward, the new generation of leadership is, is the goal of that ad. Only about a little less than two minutes left, but I just want to ask you a couple of quick ones. Uh, here in Connecticut, we're not likely to see a lot of these ads. Not a lot of these ad dollars are coming to a blue state like Connecticut. Correct. No, the campaigns are going to concentrate their ad dollars on the on the swing states that that the ad the election will come down to. Um, Connecticut residents may still see some advertising on national cable or or those sorts of things that are that are intended for other places, but we get them as spillover. We also might be seeing, especially if you're a strong partisan, you know, mobilization and fundraising ads from both parties. And the la that line we heard at the beginning with Trump and at the end with Harris, I'm so-and-so and I approve this ad, who paid for these ads is a big part of your research as well, because it's not necessarily a campaign. It is, exactly. So the campaigns, candidates in, in overall in federal elections spend the most and they air the most because there are, are ads all over the country and not just competitive elections, but also uncompetitive ones. But outside groups play a really large role, not just in the presidential race, but also in you know Senate and House contests all the way across the country. And so paying attention to who sponsors an ad is, is an important thing to do. All right, 30 seconds left. Give us some news you can use. If I'm just a viewer, one of these ads comes on my TV. What should I be thinking about as I watch that ad and how it's trying to affect me? Yeah, so I think one of the main goals or the desirable things about advertising an election is it is intended to remind people there's an election coming up. Pay attention. What sorts of issues are important to you? So I guess what I would encourage viewers to do is, you know, spend some time, do your own research and, and figure out what issues align with the candidates that you, you um, think you might want to vote for. Well, something election. tells me even in Connecticut, we're going to hear a lot about these two candidates over the next couple of months. For uh, sure. And we can always go to your website website, the Wesley Media Project, find out the latest research on who's doing what and who's paying for it. Erica Franklin Fowler, thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for having me.